Digital Spittle, who hails from Oklahoma City, hit us up and said, what teams are the biggest question marks heading into this season? Well, I think we should start right there in your backyard. Let's just go to Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma's a really big question mark team. Now, I got my feel on them, and I'm sure everyone listening to this or watching this has their feel on Oklahoma. How confident are you in your feel? And I'm excluding Sooner fans for a second because, of course, you have every possible reason. You've seen every possible way that the glass can be half full instead of half empty. You know, but if I talk to you guys and I were to inject truth serum in you, or maybe you're just a real one who can see past the crimson and cream colored glasses and you can see your team for what it is, you know that there is some element of the unknown there. They overhauled their defense, and they had to because their defense was woeful last year. Uh, They still, to, to my feel, don't have a true number one receiver on that team. Now, that doesn't mean they can't have one. This is college football. Guys emerge all the time. But I'm looking at how much they overturned, and I'm looking at how subpar they were last year relative to everyone's expectation level. And you can tell yourself that Vegas is right. You can tell yourself, hey, nine and a half as an over-under win total for a team that barely made a bowl game last year. Like, wow, they believe in us. Yes, they do. And those people aren't stupid. And I believe in you too. And it's questionable day to day whether I'm that S word that I just mentioned. But Oklahoma is an absolute question mark team this year. It's just a team that could go one of two ways. You know, I I got confidence, but even I have to admit they could go one of two ways. Another team that I think uh, bears including in this particular conversation is Texas A&M. For basically all the same reasons that we just listed with Oklahoma. Texas A&M, they got an over-under win total of eight and a half after they just missed a bowl game last year. And so again, odds makers are looking and here's basically all that comes down to. If you're out there and you don't bet or you don't really care about it, but you're kind of curious how those odds are formulated, a lot of it just has to do with roster talent. A lot of it has to do with the skill level you have on your team and the understanding based on history that more times than not, teams full of really talented players tend to have better records. I know. It's a crazy concept, but it does normally work out that way. However, I hear some of you yelling already. There's somebody out there listening right now on an elliptical machine at a gym somewhere in the U.S. of A. And you're saying, hey, they had a lot of talent last year, didn't they? Yes, they did. Well, they didn't even make a bowl game last year, did they? No, they did not. What say you? I say, I saw it just like you did. That's an exception to the overwhelming rule. But here's the problem. Let's just say the detractors are right. Let's just say the haters are right. And it was on Jimbo. Well, Jimbo's still the head coach there. You know, so if it was on Jimbo, he better have made some changes. Now, we all know he did, at least from what we can see. He did make changes. A lot of guys left. He brought in some influential pieces, namely an offensive coordinator. He brought them in. And at this point, I'm just kind of telling you a lot of what you already know. Uh, That's the point. Like, everyone knows that. The Vegas oddsmakers know that. A&M fans know that. Still a big question mark team. And with both of these teams I've talked about so far, OU and A&M, you picture getting, getting into October and then early November, if they've already lost a handful of games, man, think about the conversation. Think about how uncomfortable that starts to get. There's always that handful of teams where there's a lot of optimism, but there's also no room for error because you've used up a lot of your equity. And I think that absolutely fits Jimbo Fisher. What about Miami? We're going to be down there later this week. What about the Canes? Bad last year. Really bad last year. So much as is normally the case when you have a new staff that comes in, this is kind of like the Oklahoma vibe, new staff comes in, you immediately have high hopes. Sometimes it pans out. Other times, like with Miami, it doesn't. You're not happy about it. However, you're able to convince yourself, okay, Sometimes things have to get the darkest before dawn. You can tell yourself those sorts of things. You can say, maybe we just had a little bit more of a rebuild than I thought. Maybe we had to hit the dump button on a little bit more of the program than I thought. You know that. Every one of us has been through that at some point with teams we root for. And it's not always just college football, but especially in college football. Well, anyway, they did all that. There's a lot of roster churn. Two new coordinators. We're going to talk to those guys later this week. Tyler Van Dyke is back, and there was some concern that maybe he would be moving on. And so that was a lot of the -the off-the-field drama. Well, they've recruited pretty well. They have portaled pretty well. Uh, Their over-under win total is 7.5, so a little bit lower than the other two I just mentioned. But with Miami, it's the same thing. If they get off to a hot start, let's just say A&M comes in there early in the year and Miami beats them. That would be a really, really big win for them. Really big win. Because this is a team with the fifth-best odds to win the ACC. Even now, 
fifth best odds. I didn't just mention a conference game, but if they beat A&M, that should buoy your confidence quite a bit for how you may fare in the conference slate. Now, they do have to play Clemson. They do have to play Florida State. Like They, they draw most of the high odds teams in the ACC, so it's not going to be easy. That Louisville game, right after a trip to Florida State, is not easy towards the end of the year either. Could go one of two ways. So that's a big question mark team for me. And the last one is about 35 or 40 minutes to the west of where I grew up. Auburn. Not as much as expected of Auburn. Auburn's over under win total is barely above the bowl line of demarcation. They're like six and a half, I think, is their over under seven. So it's up to seven now. And that's been bet up. It was at six and a half earlier in the market cycle. So famously at this point, I think if you've been paying attention, if you're one of one of us who does not take an off season, you've been paying attention. You know, Auburn has portaled really hard themselves. They have basically brought an entire offense in. They've brought two, maybe three starting receivers in. They have addressed pretty much every position up to and including quarterback. And so they, they bring in Peyton Thorne from Michigan State. That's probably your starter, probably. Uh, several pieces defensively. It's just a bunch of newness, and that includes head coach. And so, you know, when Hugh Freeze gets hired, I think the first reaction from a lot of us listening right now and, and the one guy here talking is what Hugh Freeze does offensively is not the most complex system in America. So it doesn't take a bunch of guys struggling and like barely keeping their head above water to try and grasp the concepts in year one. If you've got players, especially if, they, if they've been underutilized by the previous staff, Hugh Freeze is the kind of guy who can come in and squeeze a lot more immediately out of a team, offensively at least, than you thought could be squeezed out. But you have to have those players. To put it bluntly, they didn't when he first got on campus. They are closer to being that now. That's what makes them a question mark team because they could absolutely go six and six or they could pull some random upsets and go nine and three. And then if they go nine and three, I, I can't even I can't even begin to tell you how egregious the hype machine would be this time a year from now. Good questions, though. So my question mark teams, and this was kind of off the top of my head. I'm going to go OU, I think A&M, I think Miami and I think Auburn. I didn't do a single Pac-12 team and you know good and well I could do half the Pac-12 in that segment too.